it's, it's great to be back here at, uh, at the Institute. Um, my, uh, just for those who don't know me, my background is in human immunology, data sciences, and aging. And I'm trying to understand aging from that perspective of how the immune system contributes to aging in different systems and organs. And uh, I'm going to tell you two very quick uh, stories. One is about a uh, metric for inflammatory aging that we are going to commercialize very soon. And the other one is related to space health and how we are using space as a model for accelerated aging, at least uh, some aspects of aging. I have, um, I wear two hats, a Stanford hat and also the Buck uh, Institute. I was appointed at, uh, three uh, years ago to lead an AI platform and be an associate professor there. Um, these are some of the disclosures. I'm going to go really quickly um, just because I have a bunch of things I wanted to share with you all uh, today. Um, so the first thing that I want to uh, mention is that in 2007, we built the Human Immune Monitoring Center at Stanford to establish the normality of the immune system. This is the 1000 Immunomes project that I've been uh, leading there for now uh, 15 years or 12 years almost, um, where we measure a thousand in a thousand individuals, different omics, uh, and we derive a metric for immunological health. And that was using proteomics. So you'd use blood uh, biomarkers to um, correlate with multimorbidity. Um, that's shown in the uh, far left. We can predict frailty in uh, these individuals seven years before it happens. We can also uh, correlate that with ventricular remodeling and arterial stiffening of the heart and arteries. And that looks um, really interesting in centenarians um, that uh, show overall a lower inflammatory age as their calendar age. Uh, we can also predict immunological um, health by looking at various immune cell populations and the responses ex vivo. So the higher the inflammatory age in the blood, the lower the immune responses overall. And we can also predict mortality using a surrogate uh, gene expression biomarker of inflammatory age. So we spun out this company out of uh, the Thousand Immunos project, and now it's in the process of uh, finalizing their uh, minimal viral product to launch by the end of uh, Q4 this year. So the second story um, that I wanted to share comes uh, back to two, two to three, year, two and a half years ago, where um, the human research program in Houston, uh, uh, Susie Zanello, um, reached out to me to say, David, your research in inflammaging and uh, data science is so applicable to astronauts because it seems that they are aging faster in space, or at least multiple aspects of aging, cardiovascular system, neuro, um, cognitive, and also obviously uh, muscle strength and, and muscle mass, and many other things as well. The immune system gets reactivated, viruses, and you have a lack of immune responses overall. Um, we became very good friends, and, and I got to her, uh, you know, uh, met uh, uh, her family and, and so on, and she passed away um, last year in December, and I really understood that she was passing the torch when she re reached out to me in the first place. And I took that torch. And many times we discussed this question from Gerard O'Neill that he posed to his students in Princeton. He's a, he used to be a, a physicist in 1969. And the question that I'm asking you today is, is a planetary surface the right place for an expanding technological civilization? And obviously the answer is no. And uh, so we have to uh, go and reach the stars. But there are many, many biological constraints, and those have to do with this acceleration of many aspects of aging that I mentioned. Uh, the uh, government is not helping in this, in this task. A uh, very, very small fraction of the overall budget goes for biology and physiology in NASA. Same for aging research. NIH is not helping at all. Or not as uh, much as we wish they would. And so we decided to form the Consortium for Space Health and Human Longevity. And the idea of this consortium is that uh, it's a nonprofit that will fund research in the intersection between space biology and longevity research. Um, 
And so the idea is that we will uh, have philanthropic donors to fund centers of excellence. And we have two phases. The first phase is uh, the year one and two, which is underway. We have already uh, started collaborations with the Buck Institute, which is going to be the headquarter of the consortium. And these centers of excellence ultimately will be able to um, fund that research and accelerate the field. Uh, phase two uh, goes above and beyond uh, the different institutions I showed you before, and that also includes the UK and France. Um, the management team is shown here. We have a board of directors and uh, the advisory board of uh, well-known people in the, in the field. Um, and as part of that effort, we spun out a company. Uh, it's called Cosmica Biosciences, and I'm going to show you some of the results um, that we've gathered over the past uh, year and a half in trying to understand um, how this accelerated aging phenotype that we see can be reversed. Um, and if it's accelerated, you could use it to accelerate uh, the discovery of geroprotective um, compounds. So that's a team, advisory board, um, very uh, well-seasoned individuals. So we have a protocol that consists of these different parts. The rapid aging microgravity protocol, then we do signature validation in uh, aging cohorts as well as in um, crew member data from the Inspiration4, Axiom2, Polaris Dawn that is going to launch soon. And then we do gene component enrichment analysis to pull compounds that will reverse the signatures, uh, screen them in the RAMP system, and the last thing we do is to disease, uh, to, to map this to different diseases. Um, so I don't have you know, a lot of time to show you these videos here, but we do functional analysis. So these are the different organoids that we're using. We try to stay away from animals as, uh, models as much as we can. We use humans and organoid systems that come from human tissues. Um, and so these are immune organoids that you see on the far left. And then you have cardiac organoids that are little hearts that are beating, um, and they contract, and they have all sorts of functions. And then also neural organoids in the far right. And so we analyze this under a condition of microgravity that is simulated here on the ground. And this is an instrument that was developed by NASA. Um, in the uh, uh, European agency, they use a different model. But overall, we see accelerated aging in multiple um, of the features of, of aging. So these are just a few examples of uh, different features of, of, of aging that we see acceleration on. The first thing you see is inflammation. So the inflammatory age metric that I showed you at the beginning of this talk gets in increased in microgravity by about 50%. We have reactivation of viruses. We have cellular senescence being increased only in 25 hours after this spinning of organoids in the system. So you can start testing for geoprotective compounds at an accelerated fashion. Um, and then we also see uh, increased pace of aging, the uh, Dundin uh, uh, clock, and you have a decreased immune response, as you would expect, because the data we see in, 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 in um, humans in space. Then we map this to um, different compounds to reverse those signatures, and we test them in the same system um, to demonstrate that these things are actually reversing those transcriptomic signatures. For now, we have 23 lead candidates for immune aging that we have tested already, and 10 hits for neural aging that are, uh, we're testing as I speak. We're buying the organoids um, that resemble what you can see in Alzheimer's disease uh, models for neural aging. So with that, I'd just like to thank uh, my uh, team at the Buck Institute. So we do other things other than science. We, we you know, they, they surf, they go party and stuff. We also grow watermelon, which I think is very anti-inflammatory just the fact that you're growing them. And last, I wanted to thank uh, uh, M. M, M who really designed this beautiful uh, institution that we have, the Buck Institute. He also made the uh, uh, Louvre uh, pyramids and the Islamic uh, Museum in Qatar and some other uh, landmark uh, buildings over there. So I'd just like to uh, thank you all, and I'll take questions. Yeah. So yesterday we talked about how age, um, if you just exercise, you know, it, like you'll age slower. Um, so have you guys tested more than one G? Like more gravity, if, you know, evolutionary, if you had more gravity, you were stronger, maybe you'd live longer. Um, we haven't. 
that's the short answer to your to your question. And um, we have enough on our plates to to go for a different for a different route. Um, there are certain models of uh, hi hypergravity out there, um, and I know an investigator who's uh, testing interventions um, in doing scuba diving. So uh, that's one aspect, but we we haven't done it. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, David. So yeah. Great. Thanks.